Hello and welcome to Perspectives, where we take a deep dive into the issues of the day and where we take a look at people's opinion on such issues. I am Ruth Osime. And I am Ola Torera Majakudumi Oniru, here today for another important episode of Perspectives. Today we're going to have an in-depth conversation on Nigeria's future. What hope do we all have for a new Nigeria? Very interesting discussions coming up, so please stay tuned. The starting point for our presidential aspirants today is that disaster looms in Nigeria and is a nation on crutches. Come 29th of May, President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu will be sworn in as president of Nigeria. The new president will inherit a myriad of political and economic challenges with security, health, education, and welfare, to mention a few. Tough decisions will have to be taken very quickly which might immediately make him extremely unpopular. Regardless of this, the burning desire for much needed change is deeply embedded in every citizen, and Nigerians pray for a leader who can achieve this dream for all and sundry. Nigerians wait with abated breath for this to become a reality. Their car is for a vibrant nation full of potentials and maximizing it. A nation where its people can excel and achieve their dreams. A nation of pride and patriotism. The task, therefore, before the incoming government is to fulfill people's expectations by responding to their legitimate yearnings and aspirations. And this is beyond electioneering. Leaders instill in their people a hope for success and a belief in themselves. Positive leaders empower people to accomplish their goals. All great leaders have one characteristic trait in common, the willingness to confront unequivocally the major anxiety of their people in their time. This, and not much else, is the essence of leadership. The president-elect has a Herculean task ahead of him, to win the confidence of Nigerians with his government. There is no medicine like hope. No incentive so great and no tonic so powerful as the expectation of a better tomorrow. Wow, very well said. Nigeria is at the heart of over 200 million people worldwide, not just Nigerian citizens, but great people of African descent and the world at large who yearn to see greater development emerge of our great nation. What are the setbacks? Let's run through some facts. Since Nigeria partially returned to democracy in 1999, over $25 billion has gone into cost of governance in running the National Assembly alone, as our country's debt has risen to over $100 billion today. Nigeria is currently plagued with low production and exports, insufficient power supply, inadequate infrastructure, high illiteracy, low sustainability across board, poor financial management systems, and ineffective policies. This leads to a high dependency on importation, high foreign exchange rates, an uncompetitive economy, modern slavery, and then a toxic system of injustice, maleducation, and low ethics, whereby 5% of the population thrive affluently and 90% wallow in unspeakable poverty with high desperation to migrate. What hope do we have for a new Nigeria? Massive, momentous, unwavering hope. Why? Nigeria remains the world's highest potential country with great, amazing people as citizens. Nigeria is blessed with high tourism potentials, abundant natural resources, and the most resilient, intelligent, and capable citizens. A strong focus on education, clean and sustainable electricity, most competent and ethical elections and appointments, thriving agricultural sector, producing organic healthy food, prudent financial practices that mandate transparency across every arm of government, and infusing greater humanity across the country, we will position Nigeria on the path of progressive macro and microeconomics. Our hope in a new Nigeria is an exceptional leadership with a transformational plan and unrelenting vision, great love for citizens, and deepest hope in the strength of our collective unity, peace, diversity, and progress. Much more will be discussed during our usual discussions. 
But for right now, let's watch the special report. Perspectives will be right back. With President Muhammadu Buhari's government coming to an end, the incoming government of Bola Ahmed Tunubu will be faced with a plethora of issues to address. Expectations are that the government will hit the ground running immediately if it wants to put an end to the corrosive influences of poverty, unemployment, insecurity, rabid ethnic nationalism, impunity, among others. These influences have continued to attack the ligament that connects Nigerian body parts together. The bright future of Nigeria that we all look forward to cannot be achieved without taking some hard decisions to include relevant parts of the society in the new government. Tunubu will have to deal with the fact that there is a substantial population of people from the north who believe that since the south is assumed to control the country's economy, political power should be ceded to the north permanently to serve as a leveler. A Tinubu presidency will also face a legitimacy challenge from the Igbos, not only because he has been linked at the profiling and suppression of the votes of the Igbos in Lagos during every election cycle since 1999, but also because in the recent elections in the state, he was believed to have encouraged the violent ethnic profiling and voter suppression in the state because he lost the presidential election to Peter Obi's Labour Party. A Tinubu presidency is equally likely to face a serious challenge from the Christian community because of his Muslim Muslim ticket. So, today on Perspectives, we will be focusing on how the incoming government can build relationships devoid of political and religious bitterness and how it can run an all-inclusive government that the president-elect has constantly highlighted. You know, this is a very, these are very interesting times. Absolutely. Ahead. <clears throat> I want to believe that, because one never knows what will happen with all this going to court back and forth and what have you. But for now, it seems undoubtable that Tinubu will be sworn in as president, you know. So come, come what may, I want to believe that somebody like Tinubu, who is an astute politician, who has yeah. been in the game for such a long time, would want to leave a legacy behind. That's mm -hmm. what we want. Whether it's Atiku, whether it's Obi, whether it's Tinubu, what we want is somebody can, that can take us away from the doldrums Absolutely. that we'll find ourselves in. Because there's so, we have so much potential. We just need somebody that so can maximize potential. it. Someone who is people-oriented and will look at exactly. the collective interest for national development yes. rather than selfish interest. We you want know, an end to the selfishness and we want to we, we, progress we, accordingly. Know, it's funny because the other day I saw a video, <clears throat> excuse me, I saw not a video, a picture of Lagos in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And it looks as if we had digressed. Mm. You know, where the pavement was beautifully done, the lawns mm. were beautiful, the yeah. roads were beautiful, even up to the uniforms that the police wore, mm. you know. It looks like we were in a. It looked like a foreign city compared to, to, to Nigeria of today. Right. right. You so know, when and people we, say 1999 till now, there has been much more progress. You are like, really? I don't know. If we look backwards, there was yeah. that era where there was one dollar to one naira, and Lagos was thriving. Lagos has always been that center of excellence mm -hmm. for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The port are based here. The airport is here. It's mm -hmm. always been that entry point into Nigeria's yeah. trade activities. But what do you think about? Fell subsidy being removed. They've well, that's another that thing that we'll discuss. Decisions. I don't even want us to narrow it down to just one. I mean, there's security, there's mm -hmm. health, there's welfare, mm -hmm. there's you know, there's so many other factors, right. infrastructure. There's so many things there's wrong with so Nigeria. So many, but it, that's, the incoming government has focused in on for subsidy as well. well the major decisions they want to make within something that really cannot be months. avoided. But what are the policies you are putting Thank on ground to replace? You don't want it to affect the imposing the of all subsidies as much. Yes. So, As I mean, they have to come up with hardship. ways to make this work for the common man. Exactly. You know, the 1% exactly. of Nigerians are not what represents Nigeria. So, at the end of the day, you know, we just need a leader that mm -hmm. is going to think about what Mark is going to make in the sands of time. Absolutely. What legacy is going to have for history to remember him by. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing worse 
than you take an exalted position yeah. and then you leave there being the most unpopular person mm. and in history, help. you're not remembered. The legacy that made is not written strongly. Exactly. So I want to believe that if at the end of the day, after all said and done, Tinubu retains this position as president, okay. it will be up to him. He's getting older. He will want to leave an imprint in the memory of Nigerians. And Absolutely. I hope that will be his, um, his, full, his full focus, mm -hmm. as opposed to ego being satisfied or man no right. man kind of um, right. presidency. And I just want to add that removal of false subsidies is only acceptable if it is not evoking additional economic hardships I, I on Nigerians. I want to believe that in the think tank team, because it's such a sensitive topic and Absolutely. because it's something that will reflect the livelihood of every Nigerian citizen, that mm. there must be a shock absorber that mm. they're going to use to replace the removal mm. of that. And hopefully, the, the, the money derived from this, from removing this, will be used to revamp our infrastructure and make the Progress. lives of the better Nigerian, That's of the Nigerian focus. better, Absolutely. of the average Nigerian better. Absolutely. There's no need removing false subsidy, and at the end of the day, you have tightened our belts, and nothing has improved. Exactly. So if that's the excuse, them, if there's a reason they're giving for not having grown right. Nigeria, for Nigeria not growing at the pace it's true. Exactly. Let's now see that happen. Right. If they remove that and the money doesn't go into well, we don't know that yet. That's what I'm saying. We're going well, to from see. the past, you know, you can judge the future based on what has happened in yeah, the past. Yeah, but also too, you we know that Nigeria is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. That is not inevitable. We know that. And we haven't seen systems and checks and balances being put in place to ensure that this activities will be minimized mm -hmm. and the people's interests will be taken at heart. Well, that's why we say we keep praying. <laughs> that maybe this time around it will be different. I hope we we'll push our dreams yes. rather than just We pray. cannot continue to use our yesterdays yeah. to judge our tomorrows. Mm. We just have to believe in hope. Because without hope, life is not even worth living. Yes, of course, hope and action. Mm -hmm. Hope followed by action. Strategic and followed actions. by progress. So let's see. Progress, yes. Our guests will come today. I'm sure, because I mean, that's what everybody has been talking about anyway. Mm. The whole transitional process, right. what has Sinibo got to it's offer. It's on Monday. I, I know. <laughs> but that's, it, that's, that's what everybody's talking about. To the next about. president. Do you understand? And we just pray that, you know, some, I want to believe that a man like him at his age, at mm. this point, of time in, in, point in time in his life, it's about leaving a legacy behind. Mm. It's, it's extremely important. It's it, about the people he surrounds himself with. It's about the people who are going to well, be appointed has, into positions. People who are really going to take the button of leadership and say, look, I'm after Nigeria's best interests, mm -hmm. undeniably. And it's about putting the right, right, right peg in the right in place. Place. Square peg in the square Absolutely. hole. Absolutely. And round peg in the round hole. I don't want to believe that he will give people positions out of sentiment. I want to believe that he's be enough of a technocrat to mm. understand that, look, this is about me. Now I am the one on stage. 250 million I want people to, are depending on yes, me. Yes, and don't decisions. forget, not all 250 million voted for him. Mm -hmm. it's not, so it's not as if it was a majority winner. Exactly, yet so he's president yes, of he everyone. He has more that didn't vote for him than those that voted for him. Mm. So he's the one that has to change that perception. He's the one that has to win the confidence of Nigerians. Mm. He has to make them understand that, yes, you might not have voted for me, right. but this and this and this is what I have promised to do, and then execute. Right. The court cases are still ongoing. So yeah, but, but you see, there are some segments that of the country that are still hopeful. I know. I, I don't know if you saw this morning that the one that the first the first leg of the court case was um, um, thrown out. Thrown out. That's the PDP one. Yes, I saw that yesterday. So yes. it's, it, you cannot but wonder that mm. doesn't really make any would sense. This court case. Would there be mm. justice? I don't know what I, I don't want to use the word. Would that would there be justice? Because mm -hmm. we don't know who Expected is wrong or right. Expected justice, but, but would mm. there? Would it ever happen in Nigeria where a sitting president mm. will be asked to leave? because of a court verdict. It has will happened it to happen? governors. Good question. That's, we know it has happened. It has mm. happened to governors. But will it ever happen to a sitting president? Mm. And then is it almost like a fruitless exercise? And if that's the case, what confidence does this give opposition parties mm -hmm. in time to come? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. In other words, I mean, will the court actually respect our desires or our wishes? Mm -hmm. These are the kind of things that you have to put in place mm -hmm. because they, it has to be, the court system too has to be seen as a fair, partial playing ground. So important. And I you think know? with the incoming administration, one very important key factor is reducing cost of governance. Oh, it is please. so high I mean, and so unsustainable. That is, that, as far as I'm concerned, that is the first thing that should be addressed. If you look at the number one country in the world, their federal government has 12 ministries. Mm -hmm. Nigeria has 40 ministries. Mm -hmm. So you're funding 40 ministers when it can be subsidized. Yeah, is it, it just funding? Work? How about their salaries? It's part of it. The salaries at the end is almost what some, some, some state presidents 
um, some some presidents in countries High don't expenses. earn as much. Exactly. I think it is overly overly unsustainable. Um, <laughs> apart from it even being sustainable, is monies that can be channeled Absolutely. into Absolutely. other areas. Absolutely. You know, because after all, when you decide to serve in government, you're not serving to line your pockets. You're serving exactly. to, 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 to do the wishes of the people exactly. who you represent. Over 20 billion that has gone into just servicing salaries and allowances. It's even of the, the allowances assembly. the governors get after they leave office. Mm. So that you get too. the ones that get those huge bulk allowances at, as ex-governors, mm. then go on to Senate, and now also, I mean... Imagine that money going into education, and we have a How thriving, educated, progressive population. Well? Imagine the massive change Nigeria can witness. Yeah. Imagine entrepreneurial successes. Imagine if it just went into power stability, mm -hmm. and the factories can produce products that we can actually export and our gdp is increasing significantly mm -hmm. imagine what this can do for nigeria there's a lot there's a lot there's so oh, much that lot, we can do for nigeria a lot there's so much if we can reduce can cost nigeria. of governance yeah and get the right leaders in the right position it is not rocket science I think nigeria it's the, it's the will leader be on the path that we of have. progress it is the leader that we have that would determine the progress progression or digression of our government if you look at the calasiancy traits of somebody like it somebody like it's in the books for instance okay like him hot like him hate him love him whatever mm. he he has made a lot of people if you look behind there are a lot of politicians that have when been you made. say a lot of people how many people as compared to 250 million Nigerians? well you can't compare but compared to his other contemporaries many people don't know no, no. has compared made a lot to the of other candidates too. Well, we want I'm the saying. best not just we don't want to compare with regression or like no, candidates that are not competent compare, my enough. point is yeah. A lot of people in government have gone through him. So he has, to a certain extent, some visible leadership skills. Yes, but if, what are the achievements of those that went through him? Well, it's a key but, but factor. It's, I don't know whether, well, whether it's a key factor or not. Whether, yeah. But when you're given a post or you get to a position, it's up to you to make right. the best of that position. I mean, but the bottom line is that how did you get there? Who enables there? that, uh, that, that, that <laughs> achievement? So if I look at somebody like Tinubu, right. I mean, governors have gone through him, uh, senators have gone through him, House of Rep members right. have gone through him. The truth of the matter is that he puts you there, you now know what, do what you need to do. I think what's most important is just getting the most competent people per position. I just want to give this quick example. I mean, I think it was yesterday or two days ago that mm -hmm. Nigeria's Minister of Education said that he didn't know anything about education and what is expected of him prior to being appointed Minister of Education, the most critical position in our country And today. he actually said that verbatim on air. Well, there we go. <laughs> there we go. So it's not about who is putting you somewhere. We just want you people, leaders, to put the best, most competent, yeah, I mean, most passionate people. I agree with that. And, but I have to will see progress. I have to, because I mean, quite a lot of people have gone through to Nibu, Wale Edun, Yomika Doso, Natsuru Elifai, yes. um, you know, there are quite a few who have, in their own way, too, also made their own mark in their own various fields. Mm. And that counts for something. So we are Quite hoping, a few, but we want... I know, but the the entire entire droppers of water make it an ocean. We can't just expect that automatically everything will change. We can't even expect that when he even gets in there, do you understand? He will make some, some very radical decisions that might even make him unpopular. But right now, what we're focusing on is who can take Nigeria who forward. Who can take Nigeria And if we're now left with this choice, whether or not he was popular or not popular, what we can only hope and pray for mm. is that he can channel Nigeria towards the right path. Please give us four years of progress, four years of well, good we hope so. <laughs> leadership. We hope four so. years of happy citizens. We hope, we hope four so. years of we greater so. Nigeria. Yeah, we hope, we hope so, because the truth of the matter Until is the that button is passed on. To a certain extent, the characteristic traits of any leader will be looked into in microscopic lens. And if, on that, or after all said and done, you can find at least one or two things in those characteristic traits that can give you hope. Then we can, we, can, we can hopefully move forward. What we just want is a Nigeria that we reawaken our lost dreams. Right. Bring back our stolen glory. Thank Make you. us wake up again and become Thank the you. son of Africa. I mean, I remember that I posted an article, um, a, a, a receipt a couple of years back where a car, I think it was a Toyota or a Honda or whatever, okay. at the time in the 80s was 3,400 naira. 3,400 naira in the 80s was equivalent to the almost 3,000 pounds. I remember even in my lifetime, tickets to um, mm -hmm. London mm -hmm. was less than 500 naira. How many more I mean, I might be enjoy. ancient, but the truth of the matter is that 
the rate of inflation in the last 50 or 40 years or so is over 3 or 400%. And the rate of poverty. The Nigerians in Zamfara, Sokoto, that can't eat. Mount, we are... We have citizens that are dying from malnutrition oh, on course, a daily course, basis. It's course, ridiculous. Of course, of course. So even talking about traveling is like one leg up, but there are some health. Now I'm just saying it, then at the time when it was five hundred naira, mm -hmm. everybody could travel. You didn't have to use your whole life savings or your two years salary to right. buy a ticket. The only great hope I have in any oncom incoming administration is when I see through passion, through the numbers, when I see that the cost of governance is being reduced, when I see that they are making policies of national interest and not just personal interest, when we actually see the results of good leadership, we know that we have good yeah, leadership. Yeah, I've been talking about that. How about Tunubu saying that he wants an inclusive government? Mm. From president to vice president, okay. Senate president to deputy Senate president, mm -hmm. speaker to deputy speaker, there's not mm. one woman involved. There's not one woman in that role. So I also feel that to a certain extent, mm -hmm. as much as you say you want to have an inclusive government, yeah. it should also be gender friendly. 100%. We don't have one. We still don't even have the representative of 5% you spoke, in government. You spoke so well on that. You know? Completely agree. So there's, there's so many, there's so many, there's so many leaps, so many giant right. leaps that he has to and take. And youth inclusivity is yeah. so important too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had, I think it was 2017, that Nigeria's ambassador to the United States was an 82-year-old man who died oh. on the job. That's, well, that's in itself, I mean, <laughs> I don't even... Ambassador to the number one... Yes, most even the ambassador to in the England, too, was in his 80s. But we hope all of that will change <laughs> and we can breathe some new The only fresh hope air. I have is when we see the results. Well, results <laughs> cannot come unless you start. So let's just hope... We start well with that us. That we will start well. <laughs> Anyway, we're heading for a short break, but stay with us because when we return, it'll be time to bring our special, special guest, Adebola Williams of AW Networks and Technology Education Guru. Then Toyosi Akirili Ogunshiji, perspectives will return in just a moment. Welcome back to Perspectives, your Narice News. Now on to introducing our guest for today, Adebola Williams is first off. He is the chairman of AW Network, a media holding company with investments in Red Africa, a portfolio that includes Red Media Africa, Statecraft Inc., the Future Awards, and Why Niger. He has over 20 years of experience leading campaigns for corporate brands for three sitting presidents in Nigeria, Ghana, and Senegal, and also for organizations such as the United Nations African Union and the United Nations Development Authority. Debola Williams was named amongst 100 most influ influential people of African descent. He has been the recipient of several national awards and international awards, including Young Global Leader by the World Economic Forum, Desmond Tutu Fellow by Africa Leadership Institute, and the British Council Global Changemaker Award. He's a recipient of the Diamond Sabre Award for Excellence in Public Relations and the CNBC Africa Young Business Leader Awards. Demola Williams also has an award as Sabre Awards for Superior Achievement in Brand Building. And he's also noted as one of 100 most influential Africans for Avance Media. In 2022, he was awarded the Outstanding African Business Leader Award by African Leadership Magazine, amongst many other awards. Welcome to Thank Perspectives, Debola. <laughs> well, that's, some, that's, that's, some, that's a long history. <laughs> but he won't be alone, as we are now also joined by Toyosi Akreli Ogunsiji, a technical technology education expert in the fields of artificial intelligence, data science, and public policy. Toyosi has been named by Forbes as one of the 20 most powerful young women in Africa, a PhD candidate at the Nigerian Defense Academy, researching on the intersection of defense, digital transformation, national and economic security. She is the founder of Arise Networks, a leading data science analyst and artificial intelligence powered learning research and work readiness school in Lagos. The Rise, Rise, Rise Network owns the Rise Lives where projects and pro products are prototyped around emerging technologies and disruptive innovation in the realms of STEM, artificial intelligence, machine learning, Internet of Things, and advice analysis. 
Welcome to Arise TV. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. And um, your, both your portfolios are so long, really. It's quite, a, it's quite tiresome to be in. But we know that you are ex exceedingly popular and very well accomplished in your role models ways. for Nigeria. You know, we need more like you in Nigeria. Absolutely. But Thank let you. me ask you, Toyosi, have, a lot of people don't have very much faith in Tunibo as presidency. Because let's face facts, he didn't get the majority votes. Maybe. 39% as opposed to the 63 some percent that don't believe in him. How can he steer the ship to end the confidence of Nigerians and take hard decisions that will hurt the benefit of the nation? You know, decisions that might make him unpopular. How can he build relationships amongst Nigerians devoid of political bitterness? Uh, well, thank you very much for having me. Um, it's an honor to be here. I, I think the, the first question is very apt because you know, you're sort of like ass assessing the mood of the nation. Mm -hmm. But I think the first thing that I would say, you know, about, you know, President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu is it's important. The kind of people, the quality of people that he surrounds himself, himself with and the quality of, you know, <clears throat> the quality of intentions that those people have. One of the fundamental challenges that Nigeria does suffer today is the weakness of our public institutions. Mm -hmm. And a president is, is one person in, you know, within the complex framework of what a country is. As of today, the, most the, the greatest challenges that the country does have at the moment, we have insecurity, there's high levels of inequality, there's economic challenges, a lot of people are poor, um, a lot of young people don't have faith, the Jackba syndrome. Mm -hmm. Young people are leaving the country in droves. I was reading, as I was, you know, reading yesterday that, you know, I mean, and I've known this for a while, Kenya has just made coding a compulsory subject in its national curriculum from primary to tertiary education. Mm. One of the most important legacies that the president can leave behind for this country is to improve very rapidly the quality of education mm. that young people in this country receive. Because the truth is that the wealth of, we now live in a, in a period where the wealth of nations is calibrated in the quality of their human capital. Mm -hmm. And we're now seeing that the quality of human capital is directly proportional to the quality of the global competitiveness of any country. Absolutely. So if a country like Nigeria with 18.1 as our median age, meaning that a significant you know, population of our country falls be below the age of 18, we need to con begin to invest in education. We're losing our best minds. You know, young people are leaving this country, travel abroad everywhere. Mm -hmm. I've gone to Harvard, I've gone to Cambridge. Some of the brightest people you'll ever meet anywhere are Nigerian people. Absolutely. Why are we leaving our country? How can we be a country that is so wealthy in terms of resources, human resources, mineral resources, natural resources, yet we're grappling with high level poverty. Mm. We're seeing inequalities from the, from the, between the North and the, and, the, and the South. We're seeing our people have become refugees in our own country. Internally displaced persons in, in Nigeria today, we suffer a double digit food inflation rate. Because Benue states, out of all 21 states of Nigeria, out of 23 states of the, of the local government in Benue state, 21 of them have been over, overrun by all manners of violent attacks. And if Benue, Taraba, farmers in Gombe, in, not in the northwest, in, in Borno, cannot farm, the people in the, the south are the ones who are going to suffer. If we don't fix our education, we're going to constantly have a country where we're majoring in the minors, where our young people do not see any potential for the country. We cannot. I want to challenge the president-elect that this is not a season of tokenism, where you want 30% women, you want 40% young people. This is a season of competence, competent. character, and, mm -hmm. and capacity. Absolutely. This is a season Absolutely. where we need, we need the institutionalization of the rule of law. This is a season where young people are now wise enough and they will demand mandatory accountability from this incoming government. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of work on his hands. The country mm -hmm. is on the edge of a precipice. People yeah. are unhappy. And it's not because, it's not by the making of one person. It is because we found ourselves going, you know, we, we've been dipping Systemic systematically regression. for the last mm -hmm. couple of years. Yep. And Decades. this is a period where you, we need to fix the soul of this nation. This mm -hmm. is a period where we need to restore the hope of the people at the bottom of the pyramid. The poor people of Nigeria did not become poor by their own, yeah. you know, making. And we cannot be living like refugees in our own we country. Sure so we, we, we must, we need... The, pre the president has the responsibility to unite this nation. The nation is broken along the lines of ethnicity, religious divides. There's so many, you know, impediments. 
that he's going to he, he needs to hit the ground running. Once the inauguration is done on Monday, there's no there's no holiday. Even now. Or from 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 Tuesday morning, he has to announce his cabinet cabinet on yeah. time. We want to see performance management measures. Immediately. With the ministers that are going to be appointed need to be giving key performance indicators. We need to understand what their plans are. Education, economic development, the financial framework of the country. The security issues, the inequality issues have to be fixed. People need to, we need to live free mm -hmm. in our own country. Nigeria is a democracy. We want leaders who listen. The president needs to come close to home. There have to be channels of, familiar channels of interaction where the new leader, and this is not just about the president, because it is, it is a tendency for Nigerians to focus so much on the federal system of government. Mm -hmm. I forget that we have state governors and local, governor, local government you know, chairmen. For example, the fact that your inner city roads in your local communities are mm -hmm. not fixed, it's not the problem of the president in Abuja. Mm -hmm. It's the irresponsibility of a local government chairman who doesn't understand the mandate of his office. Mm -hmm. We, for, for me, the office of the citizen is an extremely powerful office. But the point for, you know, the, the learning that young people like me have come away with in the last couple of years is the intentional impoverishment of our people. When Pre Professor Femi of Shofison said that when the same mind clamors for bread and books, Bread will always win. Mm -hmm. You are seeing what ChatGPT is doing around the world. The, the founder of OpenAI was in Nigeria a couple of years, a couple of days ago, Sam Haltman. Mm -hmm. He says that ChatGPT users in the Nigeria has the highest number of ChatGPT users, one of the highest users of you know ChatGPT in the world. Artificial intelligence, quantum computing, data analytics. We need a country that places innovation at the core of our national development framework, okay. where we are able to give young people the skills that align significantly with the future of work and the fourth industrial Two revolution. In one, because you mentioned um, also um, being able to spread the path. That's right. Which now brings me down to this police or no police issue when it comes to federal government and state police. So do you think, Demola, do you think, two questions, do you think Tinubu should support the devolution of powers and give the states more responsibilities and make the federal government more compact and effective. And the second question, a lot has been said about Tinubu's health. And as a PR person, you know, that you know a lot about managing perceptions. So concerning his health and his ability to rule a country as complex as Nigeria, how do you think that should be best managed? <clears throat> Thank you. Um... I, I, I think that, you know, giving the, the states the power to police, you know, is uh, one of the important things that can help us move forward as a nation. I mean, remember the NSA situation? Um, you saw that situation where, you know, the, the number one leader in the state, you know, uh, had, well, couldn't, you know, entirely control the police. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also happened in Anambra State. And, um, you know, Governor Peter Abi said it here as well, that he doesn't control you know, the police. So I do think that giving the chief security officer of every state the power to control the security apparatus to protect their people mm -hmm. is important. So they can every be held day, responsible. For they can be held responsible because every day the governor gets a report on how many, you know, uh, uh, carjacking, you know, all the threats, all the situations, how many robbery, how many people were killed, you know, and so on and so forth, you know. And so if you're getting such report, how do you then translate it into action if you're not able to control the largest security apparatus? You know, so I definitely do think that that's one of the things. And it looks like, you know, it, it wouldn't be hard for him to do that. And I was happy to see that President Mahmoud Buhari uh, uh, decentralized, you know, the situation with power and as empowered states to provide their own power. I remember, you know, how Governor Fashala used to talk about powering Lagos and, and what he did to power the ministries and, and the, the, the hubs of, of power that he created, which is why uh, the lady who led it, Lola Gumbi, is mm. such a superstar now working in the United Nations okay. for more that work. So surely uh, um, decentralizing the police would be good, okay. you know, for the state. We're, we're, we're we're going to worry about that. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. We're going on a break now, and then you can answer the second question sure. about the public perception. So don't leave us. We'll be right back. Debo, I remember we were talking during the break, we were talking about Tinubu's health, which I think is a very pertinent issue that we cannot ignore. Mm -hmm. Being the president of Nigeria is a Herculean task. It's demanding physically, mentally, spiritually. Do you understand? So how can somebody like Tinubu, who some perceive as not being strong enough to carry this mantle, some people have argued that as long as it's mentally, mentally intact, it is not going to be there to go and carry cement. 
So his physical state doesn't matter. <coughs> but how do you think it's best to package this? So make him come <laughs> this across. This is a tricky someone. question because no, it's about packaging. I'm not sure. I think that. You know, I think that um, um, if 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 we. <sighs> Tough question, you know, but I think yeah, that but beyond now, yeah, so, it's up to you. <laughs> so, so beyond, you know, uh, a packaging, I, I think that you know, if truly, you know, uh, our current president focuses on the productivity and the efficiency of Nigerians, if truly he has the right team, Franklin Roosevelt was on wheelchair. I don't know if you know, yeah, the president yeah, of America. Yeah. Uh, JFK, the school of thought that says that he was constantly on a cocktail of drugs wow. through his tenure. Now, you know, so, so, so there, there, there are examples, yeah? It is yeah. not to say that a healthy president is not what you need. A healthy, fully certified by everyone. You know, it is not great that people would have a reason to doubt and question. I don't have his medical report, so I cannot authoritatively speak to what you say. Mm -hmm. But what I know is that if the president has the right team around mm -hmm. him, if he has, you know, the clear vision mm -hmm. for Nigeria, yeah. productivity and efficiency of Nigerians. Nigerians are talented, we're dreamers, we're relentless, We've proven to the world that we can work. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, from the Biden administration to the King's Palace, all around the world you find Nigerians. Labs in, in, in China, Silicon Valley, in Facebook, mm -hmm. everywhere. We're solving big and small problems. Yes. As Nigerians, the most educated population in the US has Nigerians stopping it. Valedictorians in the UK has Nigerians all over it. There are seven unicorns in Africa, seven. Mm -hmm. Five of them are from Nigeria. Wow. And so if the president focuses on the productivity and efficiency mm -hmm. of Nigerians, the tech industry as of 2014 was at a $28 million investment capacity. Now we are at $678 million in Nigeria. Wow. This is pure talent. So excellent. We should focus on education. And while we're focusing on education, we should also then look at the talent of young people. Mm. 18 is the median age. The population of the country is young. Coding, chat, GTP, and, those, and, and so on, have the lowest barrier of entry. You see, you must make Nigeria where it is. At the moment, the education is in shambles. Mm -hmm. And rightly and, and said, many other, and, and many other, and many other yeah. But as Tosi rightly said, you know, the global competitiveness and so on and so forth is tied to education. But we must also do a lot in harnessing the talent that has already built. What Nigerians do is that they look at every situation and see what is the best way out mm -hmm. of this bottom of the mm -hmm. pyramid. Mm -hmm. And what we've taken on to now is technology and media. The media industry is projected to be a $14 billion industry by 2025 wow. by PwC. Mm. It's the lowest barrier of entry. It is just your talent. Donna Boy, Whiskey, Spyro. Some days ago, we didn't know him. All of a sudden, around the world, Selena Gomez is texting Rema. Rema is taking Afrobeats to India. Nigerians are ready to work. Madonna herself has done that. Exactly. And so you just need the president to understand the pulse of the nation, nation and piggyback on the pulse of the nation, fixing you know, institutional problems like education and so mm. on, and also then empowering a generation that talent is their currency, mm. media is their tool, and you can never take hope and faith away from Nigerians. Mm. On a larger scale, when we talk about PR, the image of the country has suffered badly. Mm. And one of the ways to even fix that is through empowering our people. It's through putting infrastructures and systems that help young people be able to pursue their tech dreams. You see, for every one young person who is doing internet fraud and so on and so forth, if you are empowered, another young person, you will take away from that. It's mm. a game. There is this path. And there is this part. Or even challenging their energy in the right or direction. Or challenging their energy. Or because they have to be very intelligent. In, in, exactly. In, in and so there is this part and there is this part. How are we wrestling for the soul of our young people and not letting them go to this part, mm -hmm. but enabling them to go to this part? I'll speak more about the peer and the image of the nation if we have time. Okay. You've both made very excellent points. You've spoken like true leaders, spoken like role models. We read your bios and several awards. My next question is, and it goes for both of you, so we'll start with Toyo C. Do you have any plans to venture into politics? In what capacity and when? And what will your ideal president of Nigeria look like in 2027? I, I would like to, I, I mean, for me, if people that don't know where they, they are or where they're coming from would find it difficult to define exactly what their, you know, what the ideal future for them would be. 
Um, so I work in tech, and tech is a very good thing. But I think that one of the major, one, one, the fundamental issue that we need to fix in Nigeria today is poverty and inequality. There is no way a country where the mass majority feel that they are not part of the country. When you talk about the billions, you see people don't eat GDP. You cannot measure growth by Nigeria's billions of dollars, all right? NDIC said a couple of years ago that only 2% of Nigerians have 500,000 naira and above in their bank accounts. That's so only 2%. Meaning, so, so my problem is, I see one day, we are the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. With, as long as we don't care about the other 99% of the streets, one day the poor will have nothing to eat but, the, the, but the rich. Yes. If you ask me what President Bola Ahmed Tinubu must do, the first thing for, modern, for a modern president in the 21st century, at, at his age, I would be legacy oriented. I'd be yes. conscious of if anything happened to me. I read an article the other day about the portable phonograph. And if the world came to an end or rapture happened or your house you know, fire, a fire outbreak happened in your home, what would you carry with you? I think that at the point where we are as a country now, it's a point of introspection. For me, going into politics, I, if anybody, all the people that knew me growing up, and if you look at the fact that, you know, if you just assess my personality, you would naturally assume that I would want to do politics. But Nigeria has evolved in a particular type of pattern, and the politics of our country has degenerated into something that I'm unable to describe. So very so nice. and, and so for me, it's... Just give it, us a brief yes. message for Tinubu and a brief message for for, Tinubu. Uh, uh, for me, the president has a... Um, I think the angst of the country presents him a golden opportunity to deliver governance to the people. Okay. Mm. And let the people, the, the people who he gave him the power, the power resides in the legitimacy of his presidency mm. is in the hands of the people. As long as the people are happy, it will increase his acceptance in the eyes of Nigerians. Okay. And then he can have a legacy to leave behind. Devola, quick one. Two things. Ten one, seconds. the image of the country has been battered. We must go on a roadshow. We must ensure that both internally and externally, Nigerians have faith and hope in themselves and the nation, and that the world can see Nigeria again in a place where they can bring their money to invest. Ghana is already doing that. You know, that's one. Two, the president must not be a handout president. Mm. He must be an empowerment president. The country has over 200 million people, and more than 98% of those are below the, I mean, 90% are below the pyramid. The president must not just give, you know, those social programs. Okay. It is time to give people work. It is time to create infrastructure, okay. legacy projects that actually empowers the people so that they are not dependent on government, but they are able to provide for themselves and their families. Thank and you the so future much. of work is skills, not degrees. Thank you so much. Dimola and to your seat. Thank it's you. so sad that Thank you very much. at the appropriate time. <laughs> but we hope that the little you have given us so far has been impactful. And Excellency or future President of Nigeria, <laughs> President Bola Ahmed Tilibu, we hope that what we have said in this show will make some imprints. Anyway, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much. Promises are not made enough. Promises made are not enough without purpose and direction. Effective leadership it's not about making speeches or being liked. Leadership is defined by results, not attributes. A true leader has to give, has to have the confidence to stand alone, the courage to make tough decisions, and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, then you're a good leader. Let us sacrifice our today so that our children can have a better tomorrow. And always remember, no matter what age you are, no matter where you are, life remains a learning curve. That's all we have time for today. You've been watching Perspective here on Arise News with me, Ruth Osime. And with me, Ola Torera Majekodumi Oniru. The hope for a new Nigeria is within every patriotic Nigerian as we collectively strive for greater leadership, humanity, ethics, and unity. Many people say push means pray until something happens. I say push means push urgently with strategies until your success is heightened to a point where you can't come down, even if they try to bring you down. We are all pushing for greater Nigeria, and greater Nigeria we will achieve. Until then, work smart, be at peace, make new friends, and live your best life. Thank you for watching Perspectives. Thank you to our special guests for joining us today. Have a great, great weekend and see you all very soon. Goodbye.